Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I'm with Mitch in my shop. Some of you have been asking, who's Mitch? Mitch is the man behind the camera. I can't do this on my own. He does the filming. Thank you. We're working on brake levers. Last week, we, I roughed out a brake lever. And in the meantime, I've done some smoothing. See, I've, I've got a nice radius in here now. And you see how this one has been rounded. This one is still square. So we're gonna go over to the lathe now and I'm gonna show you how I round this in the lathe. I made up a fixture and that's this, it's a piece of, of aluminum. It's got a 10 by one thread, which is the same as the adjuster. So I wind on my brake cleaver perch like so. I've got the angle at seven degrees. I just kind of used my intuition, thought should it be six, seven, eight, and I settled on seven. I have to go as far as that red line there. So I'm lining up, there you go, I'm lining up with the red line there. And I'm just making sure that I got clearance. Yeah, see, I, I got about an eighth of an inch clearance. It, it, it's pretty tight. It took a little while to figure out how to angle the tool in that. There, it's rounded. I like the shape that's coming out of this. I didn't know what to expect. And you can also see a shape here. So now we're gonna, I'll take this off. We'll go over to the, over to the bench vise and I'm gonna do some smoothing. So this is cosmetic now. It's nothing which is gonna aid the operational lever. It's just to make it look nice. this file a little bit. I want to show you this. This is a special tool that I made and it's super cheap if you want to make one. It's a, it's a one quarter inch rod and then this is fuel line. It's rubber fuel line. So what I do is I wrap the emery like that and this is a softest, it, it's a surface which is not hard. It's got a little bit of give to it. If I press my nail into it, it'll give. And that's what I use here. So a little bit this way, a little bit that way and it comes out smooth. Very handy tool to have. I don't know if you can buy them, but you can make them. So now I have some 240 paper and let's see if I can make it smoother. Okay, so you get the idea. I can always smooth this a little bit more later. Let's see how they match up. Not bad. This one looks like it has a little bit extra there, but you're not going to notice that once it's on the bike. Got a right and a left. So we're going to work on the, on the levers now. I'll, I'll show you what I got. Let's go over here. I got four blanks. So I'm going to make the levers out of these. This is 6061. It's 5 eighths of an inch. Each one cost me $5. I don't have a drawing, but I have a sketch. So this is the lever going to go like that. It has to, the lever comes down. So what I have to do now, we're going to go to the mill. I'll show you my new fixture. We're going to make a cut right across here. This has to be narrower because this is going to go into the perch. So what I got here is a, is a fixture which I made. I had to change the angle because I got the angle wrong on my sketch. So that line 
when I put this in, do you see how I have a ledge here? There's a ledge and a stop. And this is bolted down onto the table, so it can't go anywhere. See that? Doesn't matter which one I put in. They all go exactly in the same position. And if you notice this, I've got this set up, so this is horizontal. So this end mill is going to take a cut on both sides. I've got it centered, so I'm going to take a cut down one side and the other side. And it has to end up at something like 316 thou. So when I crank, crank down the lever, that is held. I'm going to match the bottom of the end mill with that red line. And I'm going to take a cut coming down here and down there. On the first one, I'm going to take several cuts. And once I get that figured out how much to take off using the digital readout, second, third, fourth one will go faster. I, I only need two levers, but if I make up, up some blanks later on, if I ever want to change the shape of the levers, I just hacksaw out what the new shape is and I got got brand new levers. And that's right on zero. There's the zero. Just want to knock off the corner just slightly. There you go. I got some machinist blue. I'll show you what that is. It comes in different forms. This is it's a liquid version and it makes the surface of the metal darker so that you can see when you mark on it. I have to drill a hole right in here and ream it. It's got to be the same, same distance from this edge and this edge here. So if I use a combination set, it's going to work well there. But you see what happens here? I have a gap. I can't mark accurately going down that gap. So that's where this comes in. See this? I, I took an end mill and I machined this and I went in exactly 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now I can go right. Actually, that ink hadn't quite. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blow it with the air gun. The ink hadn't quite dried. It's not warm enough in the shop. So I've got one line there and then I go from this edge and then they're both perfectly the same. So at that intersection point right there, that's where I have to drill and ream the hole. So let's go back to the mill. That's my stop. So when I loosen the vise, see how that comes back and hits the stop. So always in the same place. So when I, I touch down, I don't know if you can see that, it makes a very small mark. And that lets me see how I'm doing there. That's my eye. So I think that's a good place to start. I'm going to zero the X and the Y. So I'm going to measure from that hole out to the edge. And I'm at 274 thou. And then I measure this way and I see how close I am. I'm at 276, so that's only two thou. If I come back a thou this way, we'll try that. That's pretty darn close. We get 275, 275. Okay, so I'm calling that good. I'm going to put a larger, larger countersink in now, and then. We'll, we'll go from the countersink to a drill and then a rima. That's what a rima looks like. It's got straight flutes. You can run them fairly fast and it makes a, a beautiful cut. That's about 1100 RPM right there. So after the center drilling 
and drilling and reaming. Let's see what we actually ended up with now. So right here we're at 160. Oh, 160. Not even a thou out. Wow. Who needs the CNC, right? Just takes a bit longer. What's next is a radius here. So we're going to use the rotary table. I made a little fixture in there and we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. And we're going to put a nice little radius on that so it fits into the pin. The pin's not working, it's got oil on this, but you know what I'm talking about. I've got a little carbide one quarter inch rod. And I'm going to, I'm going to put that in and use a piece of paper and it's going to tell me when I'm right next to that shoulder that I want to round. So if I put that like that, oh look it just fits. So I'm locking that right there, it's just touching. So that's going to be my zero, that's my zero there. Because I don't, I don't want to come in more than that. That's leaving me the width of paper, which is probably a couple thou. So I'm going to, I'll change tool bits now. I'm going to use a little, a little quarter inch end mill. And then move this down so it just, it just touches very lightly. And I'm going to lock it here on the quill. So now, now, it, now the end mill is the same height as the surface. Now I'm going to drop this down a thou. So what should happen is this should be a thou off that. So it's not going to touch. And I just pulled it away and it's, it's, it's not making a mark. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to move it into the zero on the Y. It's kind of a lot of work for something really small, but if I tried filing that, there's no way I could make it that perfect. No way. That's what it looks like. We've got a tiny little radius that's it's perfectly concentric with the, with the center of the hole. So now we'll do this one. So we'll do some slotting now. I'm gonna slot for the cable. I had to make something to hold the lever into the perch so I could work on the two. So you see this? This is my this is what I came up with. I've got a three by fifty Allen screw. I went to my local shop and they actually had it in stock. Amazing. Can you see how that works? This goes into that goes into that hole for the cable. And then this goes into the end of the perch and then I tighten that and it pulls the lever into the perch so then I can drill this hole. I have to think of the sequence. Now I have to make a slot but the slot that I want to use is a little too narrow for the bolt for the allen screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through there just the right size for this at the right angle and then after that I'll slot it because I, I can't drill the hole afterwards. I'll try and get it lined up. So I want the hole to be in the middle. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, fits perfectly. So we're going to see how close we got here to the center. 
264. 270, so we're out, or 269, so we're out, well, two and a half thou, so we need to go, it's more on the top, so we need to raise the cutter up. And the hole we drilled, you can, you can hardly even see where the hole went, but that just allows that Allen screw to fit through into the slot. I'll be thinking about, I spent quite a lot of time thinking of how to do this because this part needs to match that. You can see how it goes in there, but I need to, okay, see the felt pin lines? That's approximate, approximately the right angle. So that's a radius of 5 16 So if I use a 5 8 end mill and come down, so I needed to hold this somehow. So. I thought about it quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is to hold it in the vise. This goes in here as a spigot. The vise jaws hold it. I've got a piece of, uh, of steel flat bar that goes underneath it, holds this level. And then I have to angle the vise. I got 20 degrees here. And I was telling Mitch, this is the part that makes me nervous because I have to machine this to match the brake lever. And if it doesn't match, well, he gets to go home early and I get a red face. So I'm really hoping that things work. So if I, if I bring this along the edge till it hits, see how I can feel it hit right there. It's hitting underneath the vise and I have a gap here. So I have to make a little adjustment. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I loosen this off and I move it back to the stop. You can hear it hit very slightly. So that's my position. So what I wanna do is I wanna take off a very light cut so I'm setting up my Y and then when I come down here and the tool bit is just nudging that felt pin mark, that's my X. So I wanna do both levers the same. That's, that's the plan. So let's see what happens. We're going to swap perches and see if it cleans up on the other one. Oh, it's taking a little cut. Cool. So they must be kind of the same. I can't use this here because this is in the way. So what I did, I'll show you here. I scribed a line of 74 degrees. I figured that out. I made a felt pen mark, not this line. That was a rough one. So what I'm doing now is I bring this up, up to the line and I match the edge of the plate to the line and then I've got my angle. That's, that's how I figured out to do it. There might be other ways to do it, but this is what I figured out. So I got 2000 RPM and I want to move it in so it just starts to touch. So I'm looking for a tiny, tiny, there you go. Okay, it made a sound. So what I need to do is to take off a little bit along here so that this sits in better. It's probably going to look something like, like this, like that. But as long as I got enough metal for the hole, for the pivot, because this has to go in, that's when I, I drill the pivot so everything matches perfectly. Can you see how it's hitting on the sides? I used a, a quarter inch ball end mill. 
and it's hitting it's hitting on the side so if I round this it's gonna go in Okay, that looks good. So we'll see if all my scheming and dreaming is paying off here. Aluminum on aluminum, it should bind pretty well, and not slip, because they are kind of, s of sticky together. So what I'm going to do now is I have to drill that hole. What's happening here is that this hole is larger. The hole in the perch is larger than the hole that's going to go into the lever. So I'm going to start off with the hole that's this size and just make a little indent with the tip. Then I'm going to switch and then I'm going to ring. So a little bit of a process going on here. So now I'm switching drills. And now the Rima. So now I have to, I've got to drill this hole larger, that's for the plastic bushings, and ream that hole as well. And that's it. I made a special tool. You see these little plastic bushings? They have to go inside and get pressed in, and it's a 3 thou press fit. So it's very hard to get in there. So what I did is I made up this. This goes into the arbor press and then that goes on top and it presses down. So we'll see how that works out. So that goes into the arbor press, into the ram. On the inside is that radius. So I'm gonna take a pair of side cutters and I'm gonna cut the edge off. There we go. And these are the bushings out of a, a Gas Gas Trials bike. They go in the brake lever on the front, front lever. Just enough space to... So that's a good start. There we go. That's in. So our next step is to, is to cut out the lever. I'm gonna make a, take a felt pen, mark it. We're gonna make one lever. So as I cut this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut on the other side of the line and I'm gonna leave a little extra because I can always take some metal off. But it's hard to add. Okay, so off to the bandsaw. And I'm quite happy with this. Let's go to the milling machine. We're gonna do a little bit of shaping here. I've got a couple tools I'll show you. This is a, an older end mill, and what I've done is I've taken it out to the grinder and I've ground a little bit of a radius on the very edges of the flute so that when I cut, it's not gonna be sharp. It's gonna be a little bit rounded, and that's gonna assist me in, in the transition. It's a lot easier to transition from a small radius than a very sharp edge. Maybe I'll go a little bit less. That's where I'm gonna to go to. It's not super critical, but get an eyeball there.
I'm going to change the angle a, a little bit. I'm going to make it a little narrower here, leave it a little wider there. So it's going to get raised up in the front just a touch. So I'll take off the burrs. We're going to assemble the lever. We're going to put in, in the pin, the, the 3 by 50 Allen screw, and put in this pin as well. And then we're going to do some shaping. Because I want to be able to shape it when it's all together. I made some pins, and they have a, a slight taper on them. And I think they're going to fit right in there. Little drop of oil, and let's see what happens here. There we go. Let's see how what a press fit it is. Not bad. So there's no bolt or anything. Oh, of course it won't go because <laughs> it's locked. So. Why I got that all bolted in, etc., is so that now I can file. And how I'm going to hold it is with this. That's just a 7 8 piece of chrome molly. And I'll put an Allen screw in, and then I can hold that in the vise and I can file how I want. Okay, here we go. So I'm watching here now because this is this is the transition. I don't want to gouge too much into here. Switch files. So I like how the see this line. I'll show you here. See this line comes along and then it goes around like that. Almost like fillet brazing in a way, how, the, how a line comes along and then it transitions and goes somewhere else. So I like that. So I'll do the other side. As I'm filing, what, what my eye is watching is this here. I'm, I'm checking to see how, this, how the step is coming down. That's, that's what I'm watching. You see how it's basically matching now? So now, I, now I'm going to switch files. I'll try this file. And for some reason, the two slots, they didn't perfectly match up, but with a file, with a fine file, I can, I can camouflage that so that you don't see it right away, unless you look really hard. Okay, so that's one part done. I think I'm going to work on the inside now because I want I want the lever and the perch to be at the same same height and I've got a, a bump there I don't think I want want that bump there so let's get all that off I don't know if you can see what I'm doing I've got a radius here so I'm file as I file I'm filing away from the radius if I just go straight across like that over and over again I'm gonna get a, a groove or a, a little ridge 
So I'm going away, see that? I'm going away from the radius. I got a couple little low spots there. Not bad. Okay, low spots are coming out. See the space from, from the bar to the edge of the perch? I've almost got the same amount there, I like that. That turned out okay. So I'll take a little bit of emery now. I'm not gonna super polish this. I'm just making a shape right now. So I'm using 80 grit and later on I can go over it and make it much smoother. But I'm concentrating on the shape right now. I can futz later. What I'm using is actually a wood file. It used to belong to my father, so it's been in the family for years, probably since the 60s. But it works really well on aluminum if you're careful. Going away from the radius. And I'm conscious to hold the file horizontal as much as I can. So that looks uh, pretty good. I think I want this to come down narrower and maybe maybe that's what we'll do now. This is going to be narrower and come out like that. So that's going to be on, on a taper. Oops. Maybe, maybe about like that. Yeah, that's looking better. It's, that's not the final shape, but it's looking better. I gotta take off a bunch of metal. This is flat and it rounds. I think I want more of an arch over the whole thing. So I guess I gotta get a little bit aggressive with the filing to do that. I like this file, it really rips the metal off quite nicely.
That's about all the time we have for today. Thanks for looking. I think you have an idea now of what goes into making a, a custom brake lever. I still have some finishing work. I'm gonna maybe modify the shape slightly, but this is the general idea. Thanks for watching, stay safe, take care.